Man, that's hard to pinpoint down to one, but I guess if I really were to say one, Who do we got next? Uh, so this was a two-part submission from our good friend, Jamil. Nice, nice. Hey, B.Jeff, Colin Conversations. It's Jamil in the show. My question is, what song, if any, on the album means the most to you? Okay, what song on the album means the most to me? Man, that's hard to pinpoint down to one, but I guess if I really were to say one, Far Away X, Far Away 10 broken. Um, mostly because I was going through a really, 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 really rough time in my life. That song was originally like six, seven minutes long and I had to chop it down to about three minutes, um, which is just the broken poem at the end. Um, originally, uh, it was a super, 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 super personal song, way more personal than it ended up being. And then I realized, I even had to bleep some stuff out because I was like, I can't tend to <laughs> tell people's business like that or say certain things. Um, but I ended up shortening that one down. Um, but that is probably like means the most to me, mostly because of the fact that these are like two, these are just two poems back to back that I was just like venting on about like just not liking where I was in life at the point in time. And like, uh, I feel like if I hadn't like gotten that out on like paper or even like on record, like it would, my mental state would not have been like the same at all. And I probably wouldn't have been able to like release this project. Cause like, that's really like, that track being the climax of the album was really like the glue that kind of like put it all together as kind of a concept. Gotcha. And uh, when you say that it ha you had to shorten it, you had to cut off a couple minutes of it, is that just you felt it wasn't going to be people who didn't want to listen to a 10 minute song or what, when you say had to? Um, for one, I was actually, this uh, album around, I did a lot of uh, research with like how to market an album, what people would listen to, the length of songs, people like generally don't skip things like that and a uh, spoken word or a poem track that's about you know almost 10 minutes long right. most likely won't be getting a lot of listens right now because i shortened it a lot of people are listening to it way more than i thought it was um one of uh my collaborators happy to like that's one of his favorite tracks on the whole project which gotcha. is kind of crazy um because i thought because of how personal it would be people wouldn't like it as much, especially because it's not a song. That was a huge thing. Like the song structure behind it was like super loose. There was pretty much, there's no chorus. It was just a poem and poem. And, uh, and I wanted to create an album that didn't extend past 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to get it ideally less than 45 minutes or at the 45 minute mark. Um, and the album ended up being 44 when I cut it down. Uh, I cut a few songs down because a few songs ended up being a little bit longer than they uh, originally were, about a minute mm -hmm. for each probably cut outside of Far Away. So yeah, that's, that was one reason why I wanted to actually have it be a more, I guess, personal commercial listen than uh, kind of like a passion project. Gotcha, that makes sense. And uh, we got one more from Jamil. Hey, B. Jeff, Colin, how's it going? It's Jamil in the show. My question for you is, what was it like working with another producer on all of the songs for the album? That man's never not smiling. Every yeah. Time I've ever seen him, it's always that big <laughs> <Yep>. grin. <laughs> um, what was it like? Uh, originally, I had to pretty much, I was I did a lot of like contemplating on who I wanted to help me out with the production on it. Mm -hmm. um, I had the thought process of just being like, all right, I'm gonna send it all to Tyrell Fanaticus since I work with him so much. I even thought about just sending the whole thing to Jamil and having Jamil work on it. Um, but ultimately, I was like, well, I work with these guys all the time. I want to work with someone more outside of the genre, outside of my contemporaries that I normally work with or that like I have, I don't even listen to. Right. And so. Uh, Diggity D or Aaron Rigg, him and I go way back. We went to college together at Capitol and I had done a couple songs with him before and when I first moved to Columbus, I had pretty much opened for him for his uh, release show for one of his albums. And so I already had the relationship there and I just kind of was like, well, 
This dude literally hears per certain parts of the songs that I'm literally looking for someone else to have the ear to be able to hear. Right. And so I hit him up uh, and he pretty much was like set to go. So like it was really weird at first because I thought we'd just be sending stuff back and forth. He'd take care of whatever right. and send me back. And then eventually we were like, we have to sit down in the same room together. Stuff will not get done. It will take way too long. So I brought him the stems. We sat down. And originally I thought I was being like, I had to like tell him like, yo, if I'm like sort of being too bossy, like kind of like being a dick about this, like, it, like you can tell me and let me know. Cause like, yeah, I know it's like my music and I know you're a musician too. So you know we're kind of sensitive about our shit. Like, right. so it's kind of funny that uh, if you, you know, don't want to say anything, but I totally understand if you like, I'm being a dick. And he was pretty much like, no, I agree with a lot of the stuff you're like, a lot of your sentiments. So a lot of it was like a huge communication barrier that like we had to break down one day after like working on a few songs, it's kind of just like, all right, I need to know where you're at mentally. You need to know where I'm at mentally on this project. And so that we can work together right. like in more uh, fluid motion. And like from there, like we were cranking things out. It was like, Pretty interesting, mostly because I had all the melodic stuff done, and I just really needed him to rework all my drums. And pretty much a lot of the stuff he kept telling me was like, man, these pockets are pretty much there. I'm just gonna be taking some stuff out, changing some sounds around, and then he added some transitions in. It was like pretty seamless once we got through that barrier. That's awesome. A lot of your music is real. You could tell it's a real personal thing, so I could kind yeah. of see you kind of taking that. You know, this is how it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. You know. It's, it's funny too how you mentioned how you're already doing research to see how things would be better received but yet my impression from your music is like it's more of a therapeutic release more mm -hmm. so than looking for that commercial gratification yeah. um i would say that yeah definitely uh especially because i don't really i'm not really looking i just love i love commercial music that's really right. what it is i love the sound of like the lush vibes you know like piano like chords that are like everyone uses um same certain progressions that like every hip-hop sample has ever used period like there are certain things that i'm just like man i want to flip that in my own way kind of like uh honestly kind of, kind of like a donald glover kind of situation mm -hmm. where he likes to take popularized sounds and just kind of like make them as weird as possible and experiment on top of like an already existing like sound gotcha that makes sense